I'm here in uh, sunny Madrid and I just gave a presentation at La Red Innova about why Silicon Valley kicks the butt of uh, Europe, at least in technology. And so I thought I would give a, a short summary here of my, uh, my presentation today. Um, at La Red. So it's in the form of tweets again. And, uh, and then like short, you know, like first I want to say I love Europe. And, uh, and, and some of you m didn't, didn't actually like and might not like this presentation. I'm just trying to be honest. And, and it's all positive. I've been doing the web for seven years, uh, two and a half thousand entrepreneurs. Uh, coming and, and, and investors and the whole ecosystem to really help. But still, uh, let's go through you know, all the reasons which I see, or some of them at least, which, uh, which make it uh, difficult in Europe. The first reason is that um, the, uh, uh, everybody's in one place. So the best internet companies and, and uh, you know, m many of the best people in the world in the tech industry are all in one place. And I've never seen that concentration anywhere in the world of amazing uh, uh, individuals and that makes it very unique very tough to um, very very tough to compete with this in Europe because you have to fly to different cities there are great people in in Munich or London or Paris or Madrid but they're all in in different places so difficult to c uh, uh, compete it feels like a campus like everything you do and some people might not like the 100% business uh, uh, aspect of it but it feels like a campus if I run in the morning I generally do it with my friend who is uh, uh, the uh, product manager of the Kindle and then I might you know introduce him to another friend while I'm running and if I do kite surfing I generally um, you know, bumpy to friends at Facebook or Google. And so that's kind of a, the, the non-stop campus life, university life experience which you get there. Everything you do, dinners, generally you talk about entrepreneurship, it's non-stop all the time, which is good and bad, but it's, I guess, very good for a business. Um, and if you don't like it, well, that's how it is there. There is obviously open door, opening an open door, a lot of uh, more of VCs and, and, and seed funding and, and business angels that, that helps it. Um, and uh, and, and, and uh, that's something, you know, that some countries like France have done something about by uh, doing tax incentive to, for people to invest more in startups. But just a fact here, they are also a little bit, you know, I guess more experience in terms of coaching entrepreneurs. You don't see some, you know, mistakes which you see in Europe. Sometimes angels taking the entire, you know, too much shares of a company uh, at the beginning and uh, and not leaving enough for the entrepreneur because they give money to it. And I have many examples of that. So I would say more mature investors seen. And this is changing in Europe with, of course, entrepreneurs such as Martin Varsavsky and Brent Oberman and and, and the Samir brothers who, who have, or Lars and Riggs, who have uh, that experience and who are now uh, uh, having it, you know, to giving it to entrepreneurs in Europe. The social environment is very flexible. You can uh, hire fast, but you can also fire fast, which is difficult to do or impossible to do in Spain, in France, or in, in most countries. You have um, a, such a social um, uh, rules and environment that you cannot do it. And I know this is not popular in Europe, but when things go bad, like during the recession a uh, year and a half ago in Silicon Valley, you really had to adapt your company and everybody started, unfortunately, to uh, reduce for their size of the team. And I, I did that too. But like, you know what? Firing, being able to fire fast, let startups hire fast after. And right now it's booming again. Uh, I mean, try to find an iPhone developer there in Silicon Valley. And, um, and, and it's also in Silicon Valley that it starts the fastest when uh, because the entre entrepreneurs know they can hire and they can you know adapt the size of a company if they need to I know this is not very popular just a fact I think it's really good and uh, and it's difficult to do the same in Europe um, the how can I help attitude is, is very different than, than here I would say people trust you more by default uh, here you, you can here in Europe you, 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 you can get to get the trust of someone or a company it may take years and then you have it for life there it's more like by default if you say you can do something they you know trust you and then give you a contract or give you a partnership or give you you know they let you do and trust you what you do. It's, it's also the, it's how can I help, you know, all the time. And uh, it's very easy to meet anyone in Silicon Valley. You don't have like three weeks delay to get a meeting and two assistants and so on. It's much more relaxed, obviously. This is something, of course, you, you know, but it's a, it, it's a, big, uh, a big difference. Diversity, we tend to say 
Europe is very diverse, and that's what makes it our uh, the strength. I actually think Silicon Valley, and I'm, I didn't say US here, I said Silicon Valley is much more diverse, meaning that uh, I work all day long with uh, actually people from, uh, from, from Germany, from Spain, from India, from China, in Silicon Valley. I would say half of the people I interact with daily are not Americans, and, and I like to interact with Americans too, but the, the melting pot you get there, the, the diversity is, is amazing and makes it definitely win. Um, the key tech bloggers and the press matter more, I mean, they care more about you if you're based there. That's sad, but it's just a fact. Um, I have experienced both. While I was in Europe and I would give a card based in Paris, uh, it's not the same as if you are a block away. It, you don't matter that much. And that, I don't really know what we can do about it. Uh, European entrepreneurs wake up in their mind by willing to dominate their city or their, uh, their country. And, and not globally. And Americans, I mean, you know, in Silicon Valley, you have much more of a, well, first, this huge market, of course. But I think it's a state of mind that people want to dominate the world of, you know, something, you know, a niche, anything, something, right? Well, I made that mistake myself a few times. Here, we create a company, and it's more like first to be the leader of Spain. Because you think like this. You, you talk to, you know, people in Paris, and you feel to think like Paris, right? too much. And it's very difficult to abstract that and think more globally. And Silicon Valley wins because uh, you are surrounded by people who just want to create the leader in the world of something. That makes a big difference. This is state of mind. No one can change this for you. You have to change your own state of mind. Um, copying and, and, and um, copycats is killing Europe innovation. There is too much, too many entrepreneurs who just see something that works in the US and they bring it back and copy it as much as they can, as fast as they can in, in Europe. And I'm, I'm not saying the other opposite doesn't work as well. Uh, for instance, Vente Privé, the French, you know, very well-known retailer has 50 copycats, I think, in the US, which is great, but it's rare. Generally, it's the opposite way around. Think about Foursquare. I, I went to Paris two weeks ago and there are two copycats of Foursquare already. And how many in Germany, how many in Spain, how many in Italy? That's bad. You know what? Because maybe, yes, you can copy something that works and, uh, and, and then sell it to someone, local or not. But it, it kills your innovation and, and it, you could not do it in Silicon Valley. Because if you show up as the 15th copy of Foursquare in a dinner or in a conference, you know, people just won't be very interested in what you do. So I think that's killing Europe. And I have a few friends who actually defend the idea that copying and copycats is good for Europe. I, I think it's the opposite. I don't think you know it, it's helping at all. And it's you know not, not a good way to think about innovation, of course, uh, for your own company. The, uh, yeah, if you are based in Europe, I think you should not hire only French people you know, if you're in France, Spaniards if you're in Spain, Germans if you're in, in Germany, and so on. I think the, 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 the team, the, and I'm, I'm trying to do this myself, the, the team has to be multinational because uh, it's kind of obvious, but it changes everything if you're an international team. It forces you to think more globally and to execute more globally and to design also your software more uh, uh, globally. Uh, thinking by default in English is very challenging, especially here in Spain, since Span Span Spanish language is so widespread, much bigger than French. But um, it's challenging, but it has to happen. With my company, Sismic, we have nearly 20% of Japanese users on some products. And that would have never happened if I was switched to French uh, as default first. Um, and actually, France for Sismic is not that big. So I'm really happy I, I focused on, on English. If you think about Le Web, Le Web started seven years ago, my conference, all in English, and no French translation at all. And by trying since they want to like be global, think in English, do it in English, we had actually some bad press about being only in English and no translation. But I didn't care that much. I still don't care. Look at the result. We have two, two, two and a half thousand people from 50 countries. And that is because the core is English. And that you like it or not. And I'm French saying that, right? So it's challenging. But that's, I think, how entrepreneurs should think, including in Europe. English first, then maybe your local language. You might end up with your local language being the smallest. That, that you know, for Sismix, French is not, is not big, not yet. And I'm sad about it. You guys can fix it. I think the way you can fix it is by, by, by trying 
to be global. Think like Marc Simoncini of Mythic, who is in 23 countries and he wanted to be global day one, right? He didn't want to do a copycat of Match.com. He actually acquired the presence in Europe of Match.com, the dating site, so he kicked their asses. Um, and and uh, that's a, a state of, of mind, I think, to, to start you know, thinking this way. So find a niche. Very, it can be very small, innovate, aim at being the leader of that niche worldwide, world leader of that niche, not, not Madrid, French, you know, Italy, German, Stockholm, whatever, world leader. I, I, I know it sounds difficult, but that's a state of mind. If you aim at this, I mean, if you aim at being the leader of Madrid, the, the whole you can do is to be the leader of Madrid. If you aim at being the global leader of something very small, but really, really, really good at it, uh, then there are chances that you actually deliver that. And it's, I, I know it's tough. Um, and um, the good news is social software never made it that easy. I, don't get me wrong, I would still think that if you start a company, a business in Silicon Valley, you have higher chances of succeeding, doing something global. But I think you can also do it outside. And you can do it um, specifically with social networking. So launch your product, focus on innovation, on um, uh, you know, listening to a core community. You don't need a million users. You need a thousand committed fans, and it's pretty easy these days with Twitter and Facebook to get like 20 countries, even with very few users. And then iterate. Listen, iterate. You know, again, been to Japan. I've been amazed by how much feedback we got because you know we have a, a very good crowd using Sismic in Japan and, and in other countries. And, uh, and focus on executions, the ideas don't matter too much. Gather this initial community and iterate as fast as, um, as, as you can. Uh, so that was my two cents about, about Europe. I, I think this is not negative again. It's, it's all positive, we can, we can fix it. Even though um, I am staying in the US, I've been there for three years in, in Silicon Valley and I actually just requested a green card, which is means that I'm going to stay permanently there, at least, you know, for a long period of time. And uh, uh, I love Europe. I, uh, I, I like, uh, now you have to choose between, like, internet business first or quality of life, which is amazing, of course, in Europe. I think uh, I miss a lot of things of Europe. But um, uh, if you think already a little different, you can, you can succeed here. There are many examples. Anyway, that was my two cents. Um, and don't hesitate to comment, discuss, insult, whatever you want. Uh, just pay attention to the fact that I, I, I really am trying to help, actually, by being honest on, uh, on, on, on this. And yes, it's tougher if you're in Europe, but you can do it.